There is only, in a recent poll, only 7% of the British people said they wanted more migration into the UK. 7%. This is a minority uh, uh, belief, a deeply minority belief. My belief is the one that is held by the majority of the British people, which is that we need a properly structured migration uh, uh, um, process, which doesn't lose a million people uh, into the in the country uh, who are illegal immigrants, that doesn't uh, 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 fail to work out what type of workforce we need and then work from there. But, and and what's more, your, your guilt, your guilt. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are going to be checking out a video titled Give me one Islamic state you want to live in. Douglas Murray obliterate Muslim immigrants. Wow. <laughs> I believe this is going to be an interesting one considering a lot of protests have been going on right now in the UK. So let's check it out. Go. Douglas Murray is in take no prisoners mode once again. In today's heated debate, he kicks off by arguing that the word migrants is not a pejorative term. I, I can't see how it is. Um, my, you know, most people in Britain regard the opportunity to migrate around as being, you know, good. The point is, however, in certain circumstances. And one of the problems we keep confronting in this is the elision, particularly by those who are in favour of mass immigration, the elision, for instance, between legal and illegal immigration, legal and illegal migration. There is all the difference in the world between people uh, uh, going to a country, uh, going through the correct processes and then living in that country and those breaking into the country and breaking the law of that country by doing so. Douglas is 100% right. As things stand, the only way we can save Europe is to send these millions of illegals back to their countries. There is also one other quick point all the difference in the world between people going to a country like Britain and asking for entry because they are fleeing some war zone or some human rights abuse, people like people fleeing from Syria. There is all the difference in the world between people in that situation and economic migrants who often have a very you know, substantial and important case, but it's a different thing. And my point is, all of these things are to a great extent being bundled together uh, uh, by people who, who don't mind the fact they're bundling it together because they're cases for mass immigration as a whole. You see, the point that Douglas just made is very profound. It's infuriating when some people don't recognise the world of difference between genuine refugees and illegal economic migrants. I mean, if someone can afford to pay many thousands to smugglers to bring them here, it means that they can truly look after themselves and not depend on the taxpayers. That said, let's hear from Atul Hatwal, who argues in favour of migration. Uh, businesses are crying out for skills and migration is required to keep our economy and to keep our recovery on track. And then there are the issues around illegal migration. And where I dis uh, and Douglas is right about that, where I disagree with him is that it is a point of convenience for people who would be seen to be on the uh, positive side of the argument, the progressive side of the argument, like myself. I would dearly love the argument, the discussion, to focus on the facts. And the facts are very different for different uh, categories of immigration. And now, watch as Douglas sets him straight. May I, just, may I yeah. just very quickly, um, first, first of all, of course, you, you wait to the argument the minute you use the term progressive as something uh, on the side of mass immigration. It may be that mass immigration is not what you term a progressive thing. It may be a regressive thing. That's just bundling things up in a language that suits your argument. But if I may just go back to the more important point you just raised, which is this issue of the, uh, the, the skills shortage. When you mention a, a million vacancies in this country, that is not far away as a figure from the number of people in this country who are out of work. Douglas is spot on as usual, and he goes on to hit the nail on the head with this next point. Your conclusion Douglas, to that, Doug, though, Douglas, if, I may just, if I may just finish, if I may just finish this point, uh, and then and then you come back. <coughs> um, if I may finish this point, the point is is that uh, uh, your conclusion is if there are a million vacancies in this country, we must go round the world and hoover up who we can to come to this country and take those jobs. My conclusion to it would be, and I think this government's conclusion to it would be, it may be preferable to train up people in this country to make sure that there are people in this country already of all sorts of backgrounds who are trained and educated to do those jobs. Absolutely well said by Douglas. But again, let's hear from his opposition. The debate is about to get even more heated. The medium to long-term challenge 
is to ensure that our workforce is educated, that we have the right skills. That is absolutely essential, but that is in no way, ex does that no way negates the short-term challenge we face. And frankly, frankly, mm. I think it's a bit rich to condemn British businesses, British workers to job insecurity and collapsing employment, which would happen if, if we don't have the, migra uh, the skills required mm. to plug the gaps, uh, just on no. the sake of an ideological if, principle that you seem to be no, espousing. If, if, if. Now pay attention to Douglas's epic response. Immediately plug. We, we've heard this sort of argument for many years. Uh, a skills revolution is immediately plug, uh, and that's a short-term ambition. The problem, of course, is that that cannot look at the long-term issues that this raises. When you bring people to Britain from all sorts of places around the world, and let's not kid ourselves, uh, 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 of the people coming to this country, they are not all coming to fill this uh, 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 skills shortage. A lot of people are coming for all sorts of other reasons, including incredibly low-skilled jobs that British workers should be able to perform. Well, now, there's a lot to unpack from what Douglas just said. But pay attention as he hits the nail on the head yet again, saying that if anyone thinks that migration gives us the solution we need in the short term, which is supplying the workforce that we need now, two problems arise. First of all, you embed that, uh, that ability to think that all of these uh, business demands can be answered by going around the world. In other words, you put off the, the pressure this is on nonsense. education Doug, and Doug, other Doug, things. Doug, if I may Doug, just Doug. finish my point. And, and you, you put off that dis debate for another day. And secondly, you, you, you make another terrible mistake because migration is not simply about plugging an economic gap or, or, or helping a firm through the next quarter. Migration is also about the identity of a country, the sense of belonging and the sense of home that people have the right to have. And that is massively altered at the very least in the long term okay. by this okay. short term okay. demand. Doug, that let Adel get in now? Back to Douglas in a second. But let's unpack his last point a bit. It's a simple fact that mass migration destroys a country's identity, especially if the immigrants are from Muslim nations and have no intention of assimilating, while the rest of us live in mortal fear that we will get called racist or even incur legal trouble if we say anything about it. But that's a topic for another day. Back to the debate. This time, the host throws a question at a tool. That there is a, you're saying there's a skills gap. Doug is pointing out mm. that there are people here in the UK unemployed who could do those jobs. Well, the, the issue is about training. The OECD uh, completed a survey last year. We, as a country, were 23rd out of 24 in terms of uh, literacy, 24th out of 24 in terms of numeracy. Now, we have a tremendous challenge in terms of skills at the end, lower end of our labour market and indeed at the top end. But that is the work of years. And it is not simply the case that that's up no. to business to fill. Now watch as Douglas cuts through his argument like a hot knife through butter. But we all know that, that, that of the, of the uh, increase in migration that's occurring, this is not, uh, um, you know, tech uh, billionaires from India coming to UK. It is not high-skilled, high-end workers alone. A lot of the migration, particularly obviously from outside the EU, and a lot of it from within the EU, is low-skilled work. It is, it, 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 it is, it is um, a scare tactic of the mass immigration lobby to say that, that, that it is otherwise. It is a lot of people people, uh, understandably wanting to improve their lot and so on, but coming to this country to do low-skilled jobs. Now, back to Douglas shortly. If you'd recall, our former Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, complained last year that Britain has too many low-skilled migrant workers. And according to her, these people did not really contribute anything to the economy. Furthermore, as of June 2021, Net migration to Britain has totaled 239,000, according to the most recent figures from the Office for National Statistics. Back to the debate. Next, the host throws this question at Douglas. The world population is very, very mobile. Migration is not going to stop, sure. is it? You, could, you can't surely be arguing that, that, no, no, no. that we could stop it no, or that we shouldn't have no. it here in the UK. I, of course I'm not arguing that we should stop it. I'm arguing against the mass immigration argument that has done a massive amount of damage in recent years to, apart from anything else, the social mobility and the social cohesion of our country. And I think that it has been misrepresented for a very long time and it ought to be talked about more frankly. There is only, in a recent poll, only 7% of the British people said they want 
wanted more migration into the UK. 7%. This is a minority. That's an incredible statistic, isn't it? Something needs to be done. The UK can't support the amount coming over, as it will create even more overcrowding in our cities. More imported food. More pollution. Even more houses being built on our green and pleasant land. A shortage of water. And even more overstretched public services. People who support immigration just don't care about their country or the people who live in it. The, 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 the Conservative Party said that when they were in government, they would bring down migration from the hundreds of thousands a year to the tens of thousands. Of course, they failed in that target. But failing in targets like that when people are wanting them also causes a democratic problem. It is the overwhelming majority view of the British public that they want migration to come down and come down substantially. So the mass immigration lobby has, is, is itself actually the one that is having to row upstream against the tide of overwhelming okay. public opinion. Okay, Doug that is absolutely well said by Douglas. Like all countries, the British people never agreed to mass immigration. It is something that our government has decided for us. As Douglas said, statistics have shown that at least 90% of the UK population is against asylum seekers coming over here. One of the reasons for this is pretty straightforward. Get yourself an atlas and look at the size of the UK compared to other Western countries. We are tiny in comparison. We don't have the infrastructure to cope. Charity must begin at home. That said, it's one thing to throw our doors open to immigrants who can contribute in meaningful ways. For example, nurses, doctors, engineers, and so on. But it's absolutely ridiculous to allow people a right to stay who have no skills or who simply come here because we are a soft touch. Here is the thing. If immigrants have quality skills that they can use to make the UK better, then they should apply for entry and enter legally. Anyone else is not wanted. Now guys, it's time to let us know what you think in the comments section below. Also, like and subscribe to our channel, if you haven't done so already, for more provocative debates by the national treasure, Douglas Murray. Oh wow, what an interesting interaction. Given the title, Give me one Islamic state you want to live in. Douglas Murray obliterates Muslim immigrants. Wow. And just by the points and the facts Douglas stated in this video, I totally relate uh, with Douglas, though I don't accept uh, some of the facts he stated, but I accept most of the points he stated because I believe immigrants coming into a country can contribute uh, a lot, you know, to boost the country's economy if they are ready to integrate effectively and if it's the right people that is coming in. So if you want to come into uh, a country, uh, you have to come into the country legally just by what Douglas is saying that there are a lot of skis that are needed like in nursing, uh, maybe doctors and other profession like engineer, but a lot of people come into the country without skis, not just without skis, they come in illegally. If you want to come into a country, the best way to be able to come into a country is to come in illegally, follow the law, do what you are supposed to do, and the country will be ready to accept you instead of you forcing your way into the country. And for some time, a lot of people have overlooked these things and they have not really paid a lot of attention to this problem. But because of the problem that uh, a lot of the immigrants that came into the country illegally because of the problem they are causing. So right now, the indigenous, the indigenous people are now voicing out their grievance as a result of that. Because someone coming into your country, failing to accept your law, failing to accept your tradition, your culture, your value, and trying to impose their own culture, their own value, their own tradition, and start demanding for rights. I believe all those things is the main problem that has led the indigenous people to start 
voicing out their grievance. So I believe it's okay to come into a country, but if you want to come into a country, you should do it the right way. Follow the law. Come into the country the right way. And they'll be able to accept you into the country. Instead of you coming in through illegally, you know, a lot of people are fleeing from war. Are fleeing from war. That is understandable. But we also understand that a lot of people, they are not fleeing from war. They just want to come into the country and they are not even ready to do, do it illegally. They pay a lot of money to smugglers instead of them using that money to better themselves in their own country or come into the uh, country legally by doing the right thing. They rather pay smugglers to be able to smuggle them into the country. As a result of that, they start causing harm to the host country, which I believe that is totally unacceptable. We all understand the fact that immigrants can help increase, uh, immigrants can bring a lot of economic benefits to the host country if they are ready to integrate effectively and if they are coming in with the right skill that the host countries is in need of. And they can also bring a lot of harm to the host country if they are not coming in with the right skill the country is looking for and if they are not coming into the country legally and if they are not also ready to integrate in the country effectively. Because if the country is seeking for a skill and you don't have the skill and you are coming in with a different skill, as a result of that, you end up unemployed. And we all understand that someone that is unemployed will try to do one thing or the other in order to be able to sustain himself. And as a result of that, the person might end up committing all sorts of crimes. And that is a problem Douglas is trying to address in this video. I've really learned a lot just by listening to Douglas and uh, the other speaker. So I would like to hear your comments. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button. Click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Yeah. Yeah.